So today's lecture is about image histograms. So image histograms is simply just counting how many times you have seen a particular gray body. So let's say that we have a, a, gray, but a gray image like, that, like this. So uh, you count how many times you have seen the body. So we have said that uh, the gray values go from 0 to 255. So uh, you count how many times I have seen the value 0, how many times I have seen the value 1, 2, 3, and 4, and up to 255. And because you have typically many pixels, so this goes to the order of millions. So we have seen 3 million times the value, I don't know, 10. So this image is particularly dark. So that means that most of the values that we should see should be uh, low values like this one. Okay, so these are the low values. And we see very few uh, very bright values, maybe here, here in the middle, or this point here. But these are not in the order of millions point, million points. And if you look at some other image like this one. Now you see that uh, now the image is not so dark, so the peak is not here, but the peak is to the more uh, brighter uh, values. And then we also see two couple of peaks. So what is this peak? So let's try to identify what is this peak, what is this peak? So the first one, which area in the image do you think? That? First peak is which one? So what is this peak? So this peak, what is what is the region in this area that corresponds to this peak? Why? Yeah, that's right. So this is the darkest part of the image. So the darkest part of the image is, is the ground and, and the, the tree. Okay, and the remaining the sky would be the, the wide area there. The second piece. Okay, you can do the same with uh, snow and now everything is more to the bright. And you can see uh, also with color images and now instead of having just a single, a single histogram, what you have is multiple histograms and you can do a histogram for the blue, a histogram uh, for the green channel and a histogram for the red channel. So let's look at the, the blue channel. So in the blue channel, we have a couple of peaks. So one is larger than the other one. So what is this larger? So put it differently. Where is the sky? So the sky is this peak or this peak? Because it is bigger, is it? Yes. Okay. Everyone agrees with that? Yeah. So what it is? If it is not the sky, if this is not the sky, what it is? Yeah, that's it. So this is the sky. So the sky needs larger values because it is blue. So you need a lot of blue. So you need a lot of it high blue intensities. And this peak is larger, but it corresponds to areas that do not need any blue. And this area is mostly red or green, so it doesn't need so much blue. And that is why uh, you get a peak that is larger. Anyway, uh, you don't need so much blue, but you don't need zero blue. You see, this, this peak is around 40. So you need a little bit of blue, not so much as for the sky. But this, even if it is mostly red color, you need something in the range, in the low range of blue, but not zero blue. You need a little bit of blue to represent those colors. So it is just a matter of counting. Okay? So there is nothing special in this. So what is a histogram? And we come back to our uh, So, so what is a histogram? So 
we are uh, working with functions all the time. So now, let's see if I can. Uh, a histogram of a given channel. This channel goes, let's say, it has a, a value that I will call, I, I will label G. So it is any color. And G, I have used G for gray, but it is just an intensity. So it is a function that goes from where to where. So let's say that I have an image. So I have this image here. This image has M pixels. And rows and pixels and columns. So the histogram is a function that takes G values and produces one. So what is G? G is, a, is, G is any value, pixel value that we see that in that image. So G in our framework it should go from where to where. So gray values can go from, from 0 to 255. And it is a discrete set, so it has to go 0, 1, all the way to 255. And then, what is the output? So we count how many times we have seen those gray values. So what is the maximum value that we can have? Sorry, the number of pixels, and what is the number of pixels? M times n. So it will go, and we use a different color for that. So the output will be red, and the mode 0, 1 up to n times n. And they are discrete uh, sets, that is why I'm using the curve brackets. Okay, if you use, uh, for instance, I, I could have said, uh, I could have used this one. Uh, sorry, this is not the right definition. I could have used this one, but this is incorrect. Why is that incorrect? It's a continuous. So I cannot count the value 0, 0 0.5 times. So either it is 0 or it is 1. It cannot be 0.1. So this is, this is incorrect. Okay, good. So that is a history we have there. So, yeah, same. Okay, good. Then, uh, yeah, that is nothing really. But this one I like. Okay, so let's say that we have a, an image that is represented with four beads. So if it is represented with four beads, what is the, the range that we can have? So it is represented with four beads, this image. So should I change the input of the output? The input. OK, good. So the input goes now from where to where at four bits? From 0 to 15. So from 0 to 15. OK, good. And then I can take, OK, so I will, I will decompose this image into different components. So I will separate what is the side, what is the image where it is equal to 0. What is the image? Where the image is equal to 1. Okay, so this is a kind of loose notation. If you want to be very correct with the notation, you can use an x, y is equal to 1, or the spatial coordinate is equal to 1. Okay, so this is a, this is a vector in R. Now, two, if we assume that it is uh, continuous, and if you want the image to be, uh, to be discrete, then you should say, okay, so this goes from zero to number of rows minus one, 
times a zero number of columns minus one. But in general, this is too inconvenient to write. So uh, normally, uh, we write this, uh, we assume that images are continuous and we do that too. Okay? But we all understand that in the computer, this is actually what exists. Okay, so I could decompose this image into its different components. And that is what we have done here. So we have marked those areas where the image, this image that goes from 0 to 15, takes the value 0, where it takes the value 1, where it takes the value 2, and so on. And we have marked them with uh, wherever it takes the value 0, I put a black dot. And when it doesn't take the value 0, I put a white dot. Okay, so these are the darkest areas of this image. These are the second darkest areas of that image. And that number there is the number of pixels that take the value 0. This is the number of pixels that take the value 1, and so on. So, so far so good? Yeah. Okay, so here, I think it, it shows, this set of images shows something that is also very interesting. So one thing is the gray value, the content of this image, and something else is the convention that we use to display any anything. So for instance, if I write this one, most languages, most programming languages, this is an image. Okay, so when the image takes really, so let's say that uh, the original image, the original image is like this. Let's say I will write the values here. So let's say this is zero, this is zero, but all the rest are 2, 3, 15, 13, 11, and 1, 2, 0, 1, 1. Just some numbers. This is the original image. And then I say image equals zero. So in most programming languages, what would be the output? One zero 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 one zero 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 one uh, sorry zero zero zero. This would be the output in most programming languages. Okay, now uh, if you want false, true, false, 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 true, and so on. Okay, so then if I'm displaying this image here. The convention, our convention should be, okay, so if it is, if you have a larger value, this, this area should be brighter than this one. But here, we have reversed that convention. So it doesn't matter. So it is, one thing is the content of the image, the other thing is the convention to display. Okay, so here, where it takes the value one, it has a dark value instead of a bright value. But we don't care. It is just a convention. So one thing is the image content. The other thing is how do you display that image. So those are two separate things. And yeah, this is still counting. Yeah. What about this one? Those of you who have seen the videos. What is the value? How would you describe the value? It is? The average. Okay, but yeah, so it is the average. You can see it in the formula. But why do you want to use the value? Because you want to summarize three channels in one. So you have three channels. If you have a color image, you have three channels. So 
So you have the R, G, and B. And each one of those is telling you how many photons in the system runs, but telling you how many photons relatively you are uh, you are receiving from a specific areas, so uh, or from a specific uh, wavelength. So you would say, okay, I have these many blue photons of this uh, intensity. So and, and then I have of this intensity, I have this many. So the blue channel is in principle a single wavelength. Okay? So we are not moving here in wavelength; we are moving in intensity. So we are going from minimum intensity to maximum intensity. We have been into 256 uh, beams, and then we are counting how many photon, how, how many of these pixels, how many of these pixels will receive these many photons? How many of these pixels will receive these many photons? Okay, and. Yeah, and, and you have too much information in here. So you have three channels, many pixels. So how can you summarize that? So if I want to summarize, okay, how many uh, pixels I have with bright colors, bright meaning uh, a lot of photons, I don't care that the, the, their wavelength. So I don't care if they are red, green, or blue, but I care if I receive many or, or fewer photons. So I have to somehow construct a summary. And this summary could be a simple average. A simple average. And then we call it the value. And is it the, the best average we can have? No, it's not the best average. So this is a, a better average. And we'll see in the next, uh, in one of the next uh, um, lectures, we will see why these numbers. So these numbers, uh, they were coming NTSC. Do you, do you know what that is? NTSC? No? So now uh, you have digital TV all the time. But before we had digital TV, we had analog TV. So the analog TV was uh, eventually, well, this was one of the standards of the TV. So it was uh, the American standard. In Europe, we have the PAL system, and in the US, they have the NTSC. And the history is that uh, when television was invented, it was black and white. And then uh, the cameras were receiving photons, they didn't care which wavelength. But then at some moment, we had color TV televisions. And then So, so you have to transmit. So this is frequency now. This is the power spectrum. This is the so this is the energy of the spectrum. And then we have channels. So when you choose a channel in your TV, what you are doing. This, this spectrum is divided into bands, and then you are focusing in one of those bands. What is that called? Bandpass filter. So what you are doing is selecting a region in frequency. So you are selecting this region, and then when you tune your TV to a specific channel, so this is channel one, this is channel two, this is channel Okay, now you focus into one of these channels. Okay, good. And then, uh, let's say the black and white system, the black and white system was using all these frequencies to transmit the, the TV, and then the next one, I will do it in the second next. Black so each one of these, they have the spectrum at different frequencies. So this bandpass filter was very well, uh, very good too. And now you have a color a color TV. What do you do? You have to transmit the color using the same space. So what you can do is 
but it's made the color here. Okay, so now with the same bad touch filter, you can transmit within the same models, the same uh, set of frequencies, you can transmit the black and white. So this one was the black and white. And this one was the color. But do we transmit the RTV here? What do you think? So does it make sense to transmit the black and white and the RTV? Or it is redundant? Yeah, so this black and white could be the average, okay? But then, do we transmit the red, green, and blue? Or it is with that part of this information it is already there? It is part of it. Part of this is here. Okay, so we will find a way to, uh, not to transmit three channels, but to transmit two. But this will come with time. But then, Okay, so if you have the three channels, is the value the best that the best way that you can uh, summarize how many photos you have into black and white? It's not. These this weights are better. So it is just a matter of weights. So here is one third, one third, one third. Now is approximately one third. This is, let's say, almost two thirds, and this is very quickly small. Okay, why these numbers? They they made some kind of uh, quality test with a lot of people. They were playing with the weights, and then they chose the values that uh, people voted the most. Okay, good. And then, if we look at these numbers, why do you think the green channel? has more energy, more weight than the rest of the channels. We see better yeah. We see better color, the green color, why? We have more receptors. Yes. We have much more green receptors. And why do we have more green receptors for, for why do we have more receptors for green than for the other colors? have to think evolutionarily where did, it, where did we go up? The forest. So monkeys, they, they come from forest. Uh, the forest that is not free. And we are day animals. So if we are day animals, we don't see uh, very well in the dark. So that is why in the blue, by night, everything is mostly blue. So we don't see blue. So, uh, blue has a lower weight. Okay. Then, interesting things. Yeah. So the, this uh, this way of combining is called luminance. Uh, so or you can call it also intensity. So in general, when you make a summary, you have a summary of how many photons, how many. This is an intensity summary. So when you make a summary either with equal weights or different weights, but at the end it is how many photos we have of each one of the channels. And yeah, so we can compute all kind of histograms, histograms of the of the uh, of the channels individually, the, the value and uh, we can also compute the value histogram or the average of the histograms. And, and this comes to an interesting topic. So here, this slide what shows is that the, the histogram of gap. Yeah, Depends on your application. So it is the value actually is not so much used. It's just the the idea that we have to construct uh, summaries. 
then that is the simplest summary that we can think And okay, so this slide shows that the value is the average of these three channels, right? So the the histogram of the value, so the histogram of the average, is not the average of the histograms. So I can have I can have the three red, green, and blue ch uh, channels. I can compute the hist their histograms, and then I can compute the average of the histogram. So for each one of these, for instance, for this one, I say how much green I have. I have I don't know uh, twenty. How much red I have? I have 4,000. How much blue you have? 3,000. To complete the average of the three, you would have the average of the histograms, and that would be, I don't know, this one in blue. But the average of the histograms is not the histogram of the average. So what does it mean? So I can do. They're engineers, so you have to uh, think in terms of, of systems. So you have a you have an image. This is our image. Then you split it three times. Uh, so in terms of systems, normally this should be operations. Okay, so now so this will be I, this is I, red, green, blue. And now we have uh, a histogram of vector. So this is the histogram of this, histogram of this, histogram of this. So this is a split. You split the, the image into three channels. And so actually, this is I'm simplifying, okay? Because I, I don't want to write all the time 0 to 255 kilobytes. So, but this is R. This is, this is just a, a single number. And after the histogram, what do we have? The histogram, okay? So we have a function. So this one is a function. One of these functions here. So, here. They go from 0 to 255, and then they have some shape there. And we have it three times. Now we can compute the average of the three. So we can compute the average of the three. So one third, one third, one third. Okay, and now this is average. Of histograms. Okay, I, I can have a different uh, a different uh, thing. I can take this one, a different system. So I can have this one, this big, and I have the three channels. I now compute the average. There. Now I can do the histogram. Now well, the other, so this is the histogram of average. So what the slide is showing is that these two operations do not compute. So we have two operations here. So we have one, two systems. So these two systems do not commute. And what is, uh, let's, put, let's make the question differently. What are the systems that you know that commute? So it doesn't matter if you apply system one and then system two, or if you apply system two and then system one. Linear time invariant systems. So the linear time invariant systems they commute. So you can apply 
we have a system T1 transformation T1 and then T2 and if the result is the same as if we apply first T2 and then T1 so this result so this is we have an input Chosen, right. Okay, so we have an input I, I. So here you have I time, here you have I second. Here we have I, sorry, we have. I third, then we have I fourth. Okay, so these two are the same. So I two is equal to I four. That's for sure. What about I one and I three? Are they equal? They are not. Okay, so in general, they are not. Okay, so LTI system. What is linear and what is TI? So we have here a couple of things. So what is a linear system? So the system is linear if what? I will write it in a single condition. So in general, a system is something. I will write it in this way. I'm not writing the, the dimensions of the things. Okay, so they can be images, they can be signals, they can be whatever. So, but a system is something that takes an input and transforms it into an output. And the condition to be linear is that the output of the equal to a th1 plus p plus p t x2 this is the same as this is the same as y1 plus b y2 so So this one is producing, so if I take x1 transform it, uh, I'm getting y1. If I'm getting tx2 transform it, I'm getting y2. So if I scale with different factors x1 and x2 and add them together, I should scale the output of each one of these Two systems in the, or two signals independently, scale them with the same factors and add them together. So this is the condition for being a linear uh, system. This is linear system. Uh, can you tell me examples of linear systems? What is a linear system? take an input and I conform it with a kernel. Is it linear? Evolution is linear. But if I take an input and uh, linear uh, continuous inputs and I compute the derivative with respect to time, let's make it one thing. Let's make it simple. Is it, is it uh, linear? Integrals are also linear. What about this one? Is that linear? Is 
that is not. That is not. You, can, you can do the proof yourself. Okay, so this is not a, a linear system score, so, no. so you, you do the proof yourself. But that that one is not linear. More systems that are not linear. What about if I take this one? Oh, I see the maximum between zero and x. Is that linear? It's not. That one is not linear, is that? So it doesn't fulfill doesn't fulfill this, this property. You can think of what are the uh, how can I play with the different x so that uh, that system doesn't uh, to feel linearity. Uh, what else? Okay, so I'll come back to, to linearity later. But our second property, time invariance. So what does it mean, time invariance? So when do we say time invariance? We say system is time invariant. Yeah. So now I will explicitly write the argument. So if I transform this one, then producing y of t, now if I delay the input, t minus t naught, this is y t minus t naught. So if I delay the input, I delay also the output. What about images? So what does it mean? Uh, actually, the, the word in, in, with images is not time invariant. Sometimes we often use time invariant, but right? the correct word is space invariant. Space invariant. What does it mean? If I have an image, I have this image there, but then I transform it and I produce something else. Now, if I, what is the equivalent of delaying in images? What can be the equivalent of delaying in images? Moving, shifting. Okay, so now I have this thing here. The output should be the same output, but now in a different place. Okay. Mathematically, it is the same, so we write it in the same way. Okay, so for an image, uh, I will use it in the word because they are. Okay. So, we normally write like this. Okay. These are vectors. And if we transform this image, now what we get is high prime. That is also shifting. Okay. But now these are vectors. These are x, y vectors. This is x, y minus x naught, y naught. And the correct way, the correct word is a space invariant. Very often we say time invariant. Understand it that time for images is space. Okay, so then, where are we? So, we were talking about these two grams on average, they don't, uh, they don't, eat, uh, they don't commute. So, the linear time invariant systems, they commute. Is this linear? So, let us now. Um, computed in average is linear. It is, right? So this one is linear. What about computing a histogram? Is it a linear operation? Let's think of it. Okay, so let's say that. Let's try, uh, I'll do the, the 
proof of non-linearity. Like I left you this tool for you. I will do the, this one about for the histogram. So let's say that we have a, an image that is full of ones everywhere. Okay. So what is the histogram? So the histogram of this I have one and then um, this is the count. So let's say that I have uh, just to put this in answers. So we have 10 pixels here, 10 pixels there. So at 100. And what is the correct way of representing these? So should I use this one? Are you happy with this? Or should I do it differently? That is a Virax uh, delta, right? So, is it the Virax delta? Or you're not happy with that? Who is happy? You. <coughs> Who is happy? Me. I'm unhappy. Why? Because the Dax step, that goes to infinity. That would go to infinity. It has to be a discrete. So the correct representation. Uh, so the correct representation should be this one. This is the correct representation of the histogram. Very often we simply do it like this, right? Because we will we prefer uh, continuous things, but uh, but the correct representation is this one. It goes up to 100, but it is a discrete delta, so it is this Kronecker's delta. So it is a Kronecker's delta. It has zeros everywhere because I have only a value of one. Okay, so this is my output. This is my output. If I apply the histogram operator to this. Okay, now let's say that I multiply this image by two. So there is another way of writing this. There is another way of writing this. So you can decompose this condition into two. So uh, the trans it is linear if this holds. And if this holds. Transform of x1 plus transform of x2. Okay, so I will show now this the second. So I will concentrate now on this. So now I take this image, multiply by 2. So now what I have is this one, right? This so I have two, we have ten, ten. And it is the time for a break. So we will continue after the break.
Pues todo bien, María. No puede dar. Pero que es María. ¿Tú estás haciendo la voz o no?
Okay, so histograms. So histograms is just counting. So this image has a hundred ones, and that is why it has a uh, zero, 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 and then at one it has a value of hundred. What if I do the following? I want to write what is the probability of getting any one of these gray values by take at random any one of these pixels. So I take a pixel at random, any one, blindly. Okay? I take a value, what is it? One. And I take any other one, what is it? One. It's always one. But I'm not cheating on that. Well, you have been prepared. Yes, it is my own game. Venga. 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 Bueno, ok, so what if I do the following process, take a pixel at random, and I want to represent what is the probability of getting any one of these gray values. So that probability density function, so this is gray, this is the probability, I will put it like this, the PDF of gray, the PDF of gray, so it is the probability density function. So because gray is a discrete function, this probability density function will be a discrete one. So if you want to be absolutely correct in the notation that we have typically used, you should use this one. Because the gray is a, is a discrete argument. Do you remember? And, uh, this is the same distinction when you were writing x of t and x of n. Okay, so x of t, t the argument is continuous. So it goes with parentheses. N is discrete, so it goes with brackets. So G is, is discrete in my example. So G is discrete. So that means that uh, I would have a PDF that is defined. So what is the probability of getting zero? It's zero. What is the probability of getting one? Is the hundred? What is it? One. Is one because it is a probability, okay. and then all the others are the others are zero. So the PDF, the PDF is the histogram of the image. Now I will use brackets because uh, we know that the, that this is uh, the gray is discrete. Divide it by the number of pixels. Divide it by the number of pixels. So this one is the probability density function. So it is a normalized, if it is normalized, the histogram, such that uh, the maximum value is 1. And there is another property. What is that? What characterizes, what characterizes a PDF? So, a function is a PDF, it won't. But it's a constraint, or a couple of constraints, that a PDF function has to fulfill. And we have a negative probability. You know? So that is the first condition. The first condition is that the PDF of any gray value has to be larger than equal to zero. What about the second one? Sorry? Yeah. So, um, okay, so then there are three. It has to be a smaller array for one. Okay, and there is a third one. That is also very important. The total sum has to be one. So the sum of all keys of the PDF 
has to be one. So, what is the meaning of that constraint? So, let's say that we have all the values here. So, we have a, and this is a very simple image with just a one everywhere. But let's say that I have a real image with values between zero and fifty-five. And here I have my histogram between zero to fifty-five. What is my random process? So, my random process is tripping blindly any one of these pixels. So, it has to be either zero, either one, either two, up to 255. It has to be one of them. So that is what this constraint means. The probability of getting one of the G values going from zero to 255 has to be one. Okay, so a PDF is a PDF. If it, 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 it fulfills all these uh, uh, constraints, and, and uh, we can define it as the PDF of G is the probability of the I of R taking the value G. Would you agree with that? So, this is the probability of any pixel in the A taking the value G. Okay, what about the following? So what if instead of this probability, I look at this other probability that we use? I like those. Because they help us to differentiate different parts of the Okay. Why do we? What if I compute? It's the probability of this image being a smaller ring of G. How do I call that? The cumulative density function. Okay, so this is called the CDM. CDF of the value G. And we can compute it very easily. We can say simply this is I go for from G prime equals zero to G and I sum all the PDF of G prime. Uh, so that means that if I want, what is the probability of getting a value that is a smaller or equal to? So it will be here in this example. It will be the, the PDF of zero plus the PDF of one plus the PDF of two. Okay, so now we can go from different color. So we can go from the PDF to the CDF. What if I want to do the opposite? So how, do, how does the CDF look like? So the CDF looks like this. So if this is the PDF, you see that uh, now the values go from zero to something smaller than one. This area is one. So the sum of all those values is one. And the PDF, that, Sometimes we also use capital PDF, okay, instead of CDF. But so this is a small, uh, small case. This is an uh, upper case. Okay, so this is the sum. What is the probability of being smaller than a hundred, smaller or equal a hundred? So I have to take all this value to the left, okay, and I add, and at the end it has to be one. Okay, and here we have the same, the same uh, expression that I have in the in the in the, uh, the white. Okay, then what if I so from the PDF I can compute the CDF. What if I want to do the object? So I want from the CDF to go to the PDF. Okay, so let's let's think of this. Okay, so I can 
I can be composed of a space which is sorry, in some space. Then we go for this thing. So let's say that I can decompose this one into a sum from G prime from zero to G minus one the PDF of G prime. And the last PDF I'm missing, so I have to add it. Okay, so I have to add it at the end. Okay, because I have skipped the last one. But what is this? So what is this? This thing here is the CDF of G minus one plus PDF of G. So there is no surprise. If you want to compute the sum up to G, you can compute the sum up to G minus one and then the, at the last value. But now we can easily solve for PDF. So I can now solve for the PDF. So the PDF. PDF of G is equal to the CDF of G minus the CDF of G minus 1. So now we can go the opposite tree. So now we can go from the CDF to the PDF. So these two pieces information. So these two functions they have the same information. It doesn't matter if I give you the PDF or the CDF. If I give you one, you can automatically complete the other. Okay, so this is what is shown here. So if you give me the PDF, I can complete the CDF. If you give me the CDF, I can complete the PDF. And this is if images are discrete, so the gray value is discrete. What if it is continuous? So if it is continuous, now you have to write the equivalent formulas, but now for, for continuous variables. So this is a sum from zero to, so from the minimum value to the current value, so to the value n. So I can do the same, but now I go from the minimum value, that is minus infinity, to the sum up to the value of x. This will be the CDF of x. And you see that they have the same structure. So this k and this uh, c here, they have the, uh, they are dummy variables. They are variables just for, for the integration. Okay. And summing and integrating, they are very much related. So the sum is the, the discrete equivalent of the, of the integration. Integration up to x. Okay, this up to x is very important. And what is the opposite? So this, so the inverse of this operation is this one. So it is the first difference, and the inverse of integrating is differentiating. So, and also we can write it in this way. So, p. So now, if you think in systems, now let's say that you have a system that it integrates, it integrates from minus infinity to x, you differentiate with respect to x. So if I put here a function, actually, I will do it in time, okay? So that the notation doesn't get confused. Okay, so I will do it in time. So if we go from minus infinity to t. Now I differentiate with respect to t. And if I put here x of t, what do I get there? The same, x of t. And, and for these systems, we have the sum from minus infinity to n. And here we have a system that is delta n minus delta n minus 1. 
So I'm convolving with that. If I put x of n, I here get x of n. Okay, so these two systems, they one is the opposite of the other. And this is the equivalent. This is the equivalent of differentiation. You have to convolve with this, okay? So you have to convolve with this thing. And what else? Any question up to here? No? So I think we have covered all of it. So, yeah. No question. Okay, so let's see, as we normally do, with, uh, let's see some example. So I have taken a couple of, of, of papers from ICON. So I have chosen them from this, uh, it's called color. So in this, uh, in this list, I have chosen this one, color. And then uh, one of them is this called simplest color balance. Okay, so now we have, uh, we have a, an image and then we will transform it, and we will not see that. Yeah. So uh, we will not see the transformation today. We will do it the, the next day. But what we see is that we can transform it into something else. So we can transform it into something else. See these two uh, possibilities, and we have here the original uh, histogram. So this is the red, green, and blue histogram of the input, and the red, green, and blue histogram of the outputs. And there are two kinds of outputs: this one and this one. Okay. So in general, let, let's concentrate. This this one looks more natural, right? So how would you describe? this histogram with respect to this histogram this is the main difference between the two are ah, very obvious differences right well. there are more yeah so we are using all this area, all these values in the red channel, they were not used. So no pixel had a value of 250. But now there are, we are getting a lot of values in this same area. That is why it looks brighter, okay? because we have shifted the histogram to the right. And the second obvious uh, difference is that here there are seals. So what we are having is this kind of series that I was having in my, in my uh, histograms. So in my histograms, whatever they are, they are here. So they have, there, there were zeros. And that, that other histogram, it also has zeros. So this one here, it also has zeros. So it has a value, and then a zero, and then a value, and then a zero, and so on. OK, so yeah, we will see next day we will see how uh, we can apply these transformations, but um, but uh, so they are transformations of this kind. So we are not doing anything special. So I will introduce one of them. It is not the one that that paper is applying. But if I take, if I want to expand my range of values, what I can do is I can take the input. And then at any point, multiply by two, and then this is my transform image. So this is I prime. So simply just multiply by two. This would create this zero something, zero something. I put the extended 
a bit the, the, the dynamic range. So actually this is called dynamic range. So the range of values that you occupy so from here to there, this is the dynamic range that is very small. Here is this is much like a dynamic range. And it would be creating zeros because if I have a value here that is 10, I would have 20. If I have 20, uh, 11, I would have 22. So the 21 is not reaching by anyone. Okay? Is it what it is doing? It is not. So if you want to say what it is doing, sorry, we have to go to here. Uh, we have to go to the paper. And then you look into the paper. Uh, we have it here. So you see, there are things related to histogram, and then uh, the transformation is there. They don't give a formula, they don't give a specific formula, but they have a kind of pseudocode. And this is also something interesting of this course. That is, we are seeing the formulas, but at the end, the formulas have to be, have to be trans, uh, uh, translated into kind of code. And this is pseudo code. So at the end, you will have to write this into Python, MATLAB, C, whatever you want, so that it does the right stuff. And actually, you can you can look at that in this in this uh, journal. You have to pay the, the code. So if you go to here, you go to here. It is typically C code always. So here we have the code. And if you go to uh, balance, so probably this is the one. This is the one. Yeah. Okay, so you have some C code. This, uh, yeah, this is not doing much. This is just a main. Okay, but you have to translate whatever formula you have. You have to translate it into code. At the end, it, is, it will be something actually funny. This is the this extra 1.5 point that I give you for the practice. Okay, and the rest of the practice is simply understanding what it is doing and, and explaining. You have to make a report, and uh, you have to explain it in class. Uh, yeah, so um, just for you to, to, to run by yourself. So let's say that we take this image. This image is, is interesting because uh, it has some uh, dark areas and some bright areas. And then uh, we can try to apply our method. If you want to know what this S1, S2 uh, mean, you would have to go into the, into the paper to see how they define it. Okay, so choose the percentage of pixels to black and white to, uh, that you want to saturate. So we want to saturate 4.6% of the pixels, 4.9% of the pixels. So running. Now it is running the C code, and we can see the result. Now we can see much better. So for instance here, you see, uh, we have a lot, much more contrast in this area. Uh, here, this one. We have much more contrast. And you have uh, this transform histogram compared to the input histogram that we can see. So this is one of them. This is uh, uh, another one. Which one for you looks more natural? The IRGB or the RGB? This one. This one, for me, it looks more natural. Better lighting. And you can play with the other one too. This is called local color correction. It makes kind of similar stuff, but now locally that uh, we haven't seen what it is. But uh, yeah, you see, for instance, this is the, the input, and this is the, the output. 
So the input again, it is very dark and the output we see much better detail. So look at this building here, which we seldom see anything in the building. Okay, so any other question? No? 